Hi, this is Haytham from SuperchargerPerformance.com, and today we're going to be talking about twin charging. Now, the reason we want to talk about twin charging today is that twin charging is one of the most popular topics on the blog. It's the second and third most read blog post that I have. Uh, these articles are pretty important. I think people are interested in supercharger technology and in twin charging in specific. And there's about 150 searches on Google per day for twin charging, people looking about inf people looking for information about the topic and how to do it on their cars. Um, there's a lot of cars out there that have uh, their choice of a aftermarket supercharger kit or an aftermarket turbocharger kit. If you have a car, a popular uh, platform that has both kits available, it's going to be really easy for you to set up your own twin charger kit because you can just uh, uh, do some minor adaptation to off-the-shelf kits where you already have a uh, supercharger with a built-in intake manifold, for example, and a custom exhaust manifold for your turbocharger. All that is taken care of. You just have to choose the right combination of turbocharger and supercharger for your final boost pressure and for your final horsepower goal. Um, I'm going to be explaining all of that in just a minute. We're going to talk a little bit about twin charger theory, and we're going to talk briefly, very briefly, about the calculations. I already went through the calculations in a lot of detail on the blog post, and I don't want to repeat that again here because you can just you can read that and you'll get all the information you need. Um, after I talk about the basic theory, I'm going to show you my preferred application of how to pull this off. There's a couple of different ways you can do it, and I'm going to show you my preferred way of doing it and tell you why. And in that, we're going to talk a little bit about the tuning of these applications and uh, the response. There's a couple of things you want to do to improve response. And then I'm also going to talk about an alternative arrangement for your chargers for a specific kind of application. And then finally, we're going to talk about the power calculator um, because I just updated the power calculator a few days ago, and it's now capable of doing uh, turbocharger calculations as well as twin charger calculations. Our database now has about, I think, about 83 turbochargers in there with all their detailed information so that the calculator can make a selection for the most compatible turbochargers for your application, whether you're doing a strictly turbo application or a twin charged application. What we're looking at here in the picture before I go forward is a twin charger kit for the already factory supercharged Mini Cooper. Uh, you can see here on the left this is the factory supercharger and it looks like a custom uh, upgraded uh, top mount intercooler. And then this arrangement here on the back, this is the uh, turbocharged side of the system. You can see the intake system going into the turbocharger snail coming out. This is our blow-off bypass valve to protect the turbocharger uh, when the throttle plate closes and it goes downwards, probably feeds into the supercharger. We're going to talk about the arrangement in just a minute. Okay, so here's an illustration I prepared yesterday. Show you the, I'll show you the zoomed out version and we'll zoom in when we talk about the details. Um, this is my preferred uh, twin charger arrangement. If you look closely here, you can see uh, this is my turbocharger. This is my fresh air inlet feeding into my turbocharger, and then the turbocharger feeding into the inlet of the supercharger, supercharger outlet feeding into an intercooler, and through there into my intake manifold. Um, I'm going to explain in detail why I chose this arrangement, and we're going to talk about what's going on over here. Um, if you think about Let's start with the engine. If you have, let's say, a 300 horsepower engine, and you run about 5 pounds of boost on that engine, or a pressure ratio of about 1.3, you're going to get a power boost of about 100 horsepower on that. So if our supercharger here is geared for 5 pounds of boost, the total pressure, just counting the turbocharger for a minute, in this side of the system is going to be 5 pounds, and we're going to have a 300 horsepower engine connected to a 400 horsepower supercharger. And then on top of that, we're going to have, let's say we're running another 5 pounds of differential boost between the turbocharger and the supercharger. Um, so we're going to have 1.3 times 1.3. We're going to have a pressure ratio of 1.7. You see, the pressure ratio is multiplied, so the final boost pressure is the combination, not the addition, of the two boost pressures of your two chargers. 
So we're going to end up with something more like 420 horsepower on this kind of setup, rather than strict addition of 300 horsepower plus 100 horsepower boost from the supercharger plus 100 horsepower boost from the turbocharger. And the reason I set this up this way, where the turbocharger feeds into the supercharger, where we have a larger turbo, capable of our target of 420 horsepower, feeding into a smaller supercharger, rated for about 300, feeding into a smaller engine, is that if you have a very large supercharger, such as a, well, I'll, yeah, if you have a very large supercharger, then the amount of horsepower it costs you to drive that supercharger at higher RPMs and at higher boost pressures increases rapidly. For example, the supercharger on the Mercedes McLaren, the factory supercharger on that car, although it does deliver 650 horsepower thereabouts, the supercharger consumes about 150 horsepower to do that. And so if you're using that same engine in a turbocharged application or in a twin charged application, you could deliver about 800 horsepower to that motor at the same boost level. The reason you don't get that much power in the factory package is because the supercharger is sucking 150 horsepower just to spin at that RPM at that boost level. Now, don't get me wrong, superchargers are great in that uh, they can deliver high boost pressure at any RPM, and so for uh, around town drivability and for your uh, mid-RPM performance, a positive displacement supercharger is going to outdo even the most responsive turbocharger. But the combination of twin charging allows us to use a smaller supercharger, which doesn't have as much a high RPM horsepower loss or as much drag on the belt system, to reduce our power levels, and also combine that with a larger turbocharger that's able to give us the top end that we want. So it's the best of both worlds combination. It's a combination where you have instant throttle response, instant boost response coming from the supercharger, from a positive displacement or a roots or a twin screw style supercharger, combined with a larger turbocharger gave, capable of giving us cold efficient air on the top end of the RPM range. Now, as we said earlier, when you do this arrangement, which is a sequential arrangement where the turbocharger feeds into the supercharger, the boost pressures are compounded so that if you're running a 1.3 pressure ratio on your turbo and a 1.3 pressure ratio on your supercharger, the combination out here is a 1.69 pressure ratio. So boost doesn't add linearly, it compounds, and also, not just boost pressure, but also temperature rise uh, compounds between the two chargers. If you have a 70% efficiency on your turbocharger and a 70% thermal efficiency on your supercharger, the resultant efficiency of the combination is about 49%. Because you're compressing the air twice, you're heating it twice, then the combination of that is going to be also compounded rather than additive. And that's why I'm doing this arrangement this way, where the turbocharger feeds the supercharger, and then we have the intercooler system and a water injection set up right before you go into the intake manifold. Combination of air-to-air -air intercooling or air-to-water intercooling, as well as water injection, is capable is more than capable of bringing the intake air temp level and the intake air temperature levels back to where you need them to be, roughly about 30 degrees above ambient to get a stable combustion, a stable mixture. Now, another benefit to using the sequential setup rather than using a parallel setup or a switch setup is that we don't need to use a bypass valve or a switchover valve between the supercharger and the turbocharger. The reason we can pull this off is that even if I'm using a smaller rated supercharger, for example, I'm shooting for 600 horsepower, but my supercharger is only designed for 400 horsepower, that rating is rated when the supercharger is being fed by naturally aspirated air. When the air is already compressed by the turbocharger, then the traditional rating for the supercharger can be inflated for this specific application. And I'll show you that later. The power calculator knows how to do this. Basically, if the air is already compressed, then rather than flowing the 400 advertised horsepower, that the manufacturer claims the supercharger will be able to flow more depending on the pressure ratio and the density ratio of the air mixture. 